If everything is relative, what can be more relative than relations between the sexes? Every week, your host, Jack Kammer, talks with a man or a woman on the podcasts Men Are Talking or Goodwill Toward Men and aims to deliver at least one idea that will make you think, wow, I never thought of it like that. Today, Jack talks with a man on Men Are Talking. Today on Men Are Talking, we talk with violence and public health expert Ed Bartlett about a documentary film that ends up not documenting what it purports to document, but in fact unwittingly serves as a sort of meta-documentary on what has become of feminism. Hello, Ed Bartlett. Hello, Jack Cameron. Good to see you. Very good to see you. Thank you for your time. So, Ed, it's uh, important that we start this podcast with you establishing your credentials to talk a little bit about uh, Native American issues, especially in the Southwest. Can you uh, detail your cred about what's going on on and yeah, off certainly, the res? Certainly, Jack. So, um, so I, I, uh, Formerly lived in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and my my employment related to working with the Isleta Pueblo uh, Reservation, which is south of Albuquerque. Um, and in a subsequent employment, I was working a lot with Navajo Indians, both on and off reservation in New Mexico and Arizona. And I'll just add that I've spent actually considerable time with in indigenous groups in other countries as well. Okay, very good. Now, we should mention that your PhD is in public health, and yes. you were in New Mexico, in Isleta, and other places working on public health issues? Exactly, yes. It was a, it was a program, as a CDC-funded project to identify what we call community health opinion leaders. These are the, the, the persons who were viewed as influential and knowledgeable in that community. And we sought to identify them and then give them additional training so they could be of greater assistance to people, the local community in public health matters. So how much time did you spend working with uh, Native American communities uh, what, during this project? Well, that was, we had three, three sites. Um, actually, one of them was with urban Indians in Albuquerque, uh, in the Isleta Pueblo. And then we had another site in northern New Mexico, which was, um, which, which is, of course, uh, Hispanic, Spanish speaking. And I also speak Spanish. Uh -huh. Very good. So this was more than just a hit and run. Um, drop in as the expert, uh, deliver your wisdom and then split. You got to know what was what, what the salient issues were, uh, at least in terms of public health. Uh, among Native Americans in New Mexico and Arizona. Fair that's enough? Exactly, that's exactly right. Yeah. And I've okay. Very good. Now, you contacted me. Well, you contacted a lot of people on your mailing list, but I got a, an email from you about uh, a movie, a documentary that is going to be airing on PBS. I should mention that right now. We are recording this on Sunday, March 20th, 2022. Tomorrow, on the evening of Monday, March 21st, on PBS, a movie called Bring Her Home, I think, uh, will be premiering. Um, you sent out an email blast about this documentary, and why did you find it worthy of note? Well, <clears throat> let's just cut to the chase here, Jack. So... So this movie is all about missing and murdered. Uh, well, the, is the broader issue is missing and murdered Indians. And of course we know it's public health statistics show uh, American Indians have a much higher rate of being missing and going murdered. Um, and it turns out when you look at these numbers and I'll, I'll be happy to give you the exact numbers if you'd like, um, it turns out that, that the American Indian men are far, at far greater risk <clears throat> of being both missing and, and, and going and being murdered. Uh, as far as missing, and this is a, a, an FBI database called the National Crime Information Center, 
indicates that uh, 61% of all missing American Indians are male. Um, and then as far as murdered uh, Indian American Indians, CDC, just Centers for Disease Control, just put out a report a few months ago that reported 75% of all murdered American Indians, again, are male. So we're talking about a problem that's predominantly uh, affects men. Of course, there are women that are affected or go missing and are murdered. Um, but obviously, we know that they represent a minority of the overall picture. Very good. Without getting too far into the weeds, are there any numbers that you would like to cite quickly? Yeah, I can tell you the actual numbers. Uh, so I'll, I'll just mention the, the numbers for, for missing individuals. Again, this comes from, it's called the National Crime Information Center, uh, which is uh, run by the FBI. <clears throat> and uh, according to their, the report that's on their website, um, for, and this was their 2020 report, uh, page eight, if you really want to look at it, uh, reported 918 missing uh, Native American men compared to 578 missing female uh, Indians. Work the math, that's 61% of missing Indians are male. And how do the uh, statistics on people who are murdered compare? Yeah, well, that that's even more disturbing in its in its in its imbalance. Seventy five percent of all murdered American Indians are male. Again, this is a report that the Centers for Disease Control released, uh, I believe, in December. It's a very recent report. It's the most authoritative uh, source we have about this issue, um, and it's really stunning when you think that three quarters of all murdered American Indians are male. So along comes PBS, and they're going to do their public duty by helping us understand this problem, <laughs> except they didn't. So you've seen the movie. On, you saw it as a pri on a private screener. I, I saw it on the private screener. Um, I was not impressed. I found it very painful to watch, almost as if I had some grit in my eye <laughs> while I was watching it. Um, but you're the expert. Tell me what you thought of this, uh, this PBS documentary called Bring Her Home. Yeah, sure. So again, the title is Bring Her Home. Uh, this was uh, produced by the Minnesota PBS uh, affiliate, and it's going to be premiering uh, on Monday, March 21st, and will be available for PBS affiliates across the nation. And they've already actually begun to advertise it. So, so this is a pretty significant media effort. Uh, it's an hour long program. They actually call it a documentary. So, so when you hear the word documentary, what do you think of? Well, you think of, you think of academic experts. You, you think of People, you know, talking about the latest government report. Uh, you talk about uh, people offering perhaps different perspectives, but in order to get a great, a, a, a full understanding of the issue. <laughs> well, unfortunately, Bring Her Home has none of the above. There, there, there are no academic or researchers. There's no discussion of government databases. There's no presentation of different views. Uh, it's a, it, it all it presents the issue of missing and murdered Indian women from a very limited, and I think it's fair to say it's a feminist lens that it presents. So the impression it leaves us with is, is what? If a person watches this documentary, doesn't know what you know, what are they going to come away thinking? Well, so, you know, again, six out of, six out of 10 are, are men, six out of 10 missing are men, three out of four murdered are, are men. So you would kind of expect at least some mention of that, of that key fact. Well, no, there's, there's, I mean, categorically, there's no mention of, uh, of those facts, or even, even a hint of the fact there's, there's not even a, 
you know, a, a single, you know, a giveaway line <laughs> in the whole one hour program that, that, that even alludes to the issue. Um, and so, yeah, so it definitely gives the impression that this is an issue that only affects uh, American Indian women. Um, it, it has a very high emotional content. Uh, at one point in the, in the film, it shows a hearing uh, held in, in, the, in the House of Representatives uh, with both, with one of the representatives, Deb Holland, who by the way comes from uh, New Mexico, it shows her in tears over the testimony, but the testimony was only about missing and murdered Indian women. Uh, no tears offered about missing and murdered Indian men. And uh, Deb Holland is now the Department of Interior Secretary, is that correct? Uh, she is with the Bureau of Indian Affairs, which is part of the Department of the Interior. Uh, she is the, um, the head person at the BIA, yes. so she. She occupies a very influential position there. Okay. I put together a, f a little video of some clips from Bring Her Home. And I am, I think, uh, ready to display that video clip. Uh, many people who will hear this uh, podcast and vidcast will be hearing only the audio, but the audio is, is pretty informative. And for those parts of the um, the video that don't have any audio, I add a little narration. Would uh, would this be a good opportunity for us then, right now, to play? Yeah, let's let's uh, go ahead and see the the clips. <laughs> okay, so I am going to share my screen. I might need a second or two to get this going. Stand by. Here we go. Women are life givers. Women sometimes run a household. They're the glue to the family. Being from a matriarchal, matrilineal people, when a woman goes missing, it, it completely ends the lifeline for a clan to continue. So it's, it's big, it's a big deal. Here we see a close-up of a poster in an art gallery that says, women are sacred. Next, we see Minnesota Lieutenant Governor Peggy Flanagan addressing a room full of several hundred people. More and more people are in this fight with us shoulder to shoulder to ensure that our Native women and girls, our Two-Spirit community, that we are of value, that we deserve to be seen and heard and protected. While this is something that happens to Native women, that's not the only thing to know of Native women. Native women ultimately are strong and resilient and powerful and life givers. And finally, after all this talk of honoring and respecting women, we see a banner referring to the Indian Wars of the 1860s as genocide of indigenous women and children with absolutely no recognition or concern for the Native American men who died in the selfless effort to protect those women and children. All right, stop that share. Did that come through okay, Ed? It came through, and I think the, the clip you pulled out was the key one, the Peggy Flanagan, the Lieutenant Governor of Minnesota. And I'll, I actually wrote down her quote because it's so stunning. Uh, she said, Native women and girls, quote, we are of value. We deserve to be seen and heard and protected. And of course, she's right. But she left something very important out of that statement. What about Indian men? Yeah. And it seems, it's, it's really sad to have to say this, but it sort of seems as if the belief is very deep that they're not as important. Men aren't as important. Women are life givers. It was mentioned twice in this little clip. Women are life givers. When in fact, not to demean women in any way and their importance in, in humanity, but you know, women aren't life givers. They, they, are the, they are the incubators of a zygote. 
the union of a male of a, of a of an egg and a and a sperm, and it's the the zygote that is what creates life. Women aren't giving life. There was the the banner or the the poster that said women are sacred. Um, it started out by talking about how it's a matrilineal society. Well, you know, we talk all the time about the patriarchy. Here we're talking about matrilineality. It, it just seems as if women just sort of think that they are more deserving of life and concern and help than men are. I mean, how is this conclusion inescapable? Well, Jack, I really Escape. think you're, you're, I think you're understating it. Um, I think we need to, to be more clear about this uh, utter and complete uh, removal of any mention, of any illusion, of any, any facts, of any statistics, of any anecdotes of missing and murdered Indian men, that, that represents the, the erasing of an entire class of victims. Uh, it's not understating or it's not under, it's the complete erasure of a complete class of, of persons. Um, I find it hard to think of a greater civil rights violation to simply erase the existence of an entire class of individuals. Can you? It's, that's a good way to put it. No, I can't. No, I can't. So, so in the, in the, in the, you know, in the, Presumptive, presumptive effort to address uh, the civil rights of missing and, and, and murdered Indian women, which of course deserves greater attention than the past. Nobody is, is, is denying that fact, but in, in asserting that fact, but in the total elimination of reference to, to missing and murdered Indian men, um, this is a severe civil rights violation. You know, we, we live in an era where you can't refer to a firefighter as a fireman or a mail carrier as a mailman or a police officer as a policeman because that's sexist and it might create the impression in little girls that they are excluded from these occupations. Well, here we have the possibility that a young boy attending one of these rallies might get the impression that he and all other males are excluded from protection, from being cared about, and, and quite likely get the message that you better not talk about what you need because nobody cares, and you just suck it up and be a man, which is really I think uh, a way of saying that toxic femininity, a toxic masculinity. Uh, comes from outside, not from inside of male culture. Any thoughts about that? Well, uh, Jack, I hate to be too critical, but I, I think, again, you are understating the gravity of the misstatement in, in Bring Her Home. And I'm going to pull out a, a quote. This is the actual quote from the, from the, the film. Um, I prefer not to call it a documentary. Uh, this is the actual quote, um, uh, reteaching men how to be in a relationship with women. Reteaching men. Um, the, the, undercurrent of, the undercurrent message of, of the film is that, um, that this, this tragedy of missing and murdered Indian women is the fault of men, of men. Of, of, of Indian men and white men, that, that message comes through unmistakably and then talks about reteaching men how to be in a relationship with women. Uh, I think we just have to say, what about reteaching the group that call, calls themselves MMIW, which stands for Missing and Murdered Indian Women? What about reteaching MMIW advocates about the sanctity of life of missing and murdered Indian men. Yeah. Yeah. You see this problem in a larger context. 
I would suspect. We should mention that you are the president of the Coalition to End Domestic Violence. Do you see this campaign about missing and murdered Indian women being um, in any way related to what we hear about violence against women, domestic violence, and uh, the Violence Against Women Act, which was just reauthorized in Congress to the tune of how much did they get this year in this go around? Is it is it still about five hundred million a year? Uh, it was increased over seven hundred million a year, so there's a substantial pay raise there. Um, but yeah, that's a good question, Jack. I I have followed the domestic violence issue for uh, fifteen years, um, actually seventeen years, if you want to be exact. Um, and and we un- we know again. Let's look at the the actual numbers from the Centers for Disease Control. Each year, there are uh, 4.2 million male victims of physical domestic violence compared to 3.5 million female victims. Uh, that, again, that comes from the CDC. Um, that's, that's the best data that's out there um, showing that, <clears throat> that men are more likely to be victims of physical violence than, than women. And, and as I followed this issue over the, over the years, um, when you go to the websites of the various domestic violence organizations, um, many of them, in fact, do recognize the existence of male victims of domestic violence. They may give it less attention, or they 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 may you know hide it in a footnote, or they may use um, you know t- statistics that are not quite accurate. But at least there's some reference to it. All right. Well, <laughs> uh, bring her home goes beyond that. Again, they they have eviscerated, systematically eviscerated every and all mention of the existence of missing and male, missing and murdered male Indians. Uh, Really, that is extraordinary. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Unfortunately, it's also a little bit, a little bit too common, isn't it? Or a lot, a lot too common. It's extraordinary, but in a way it's getting to be ordinary. Well, I don't know about trends. Uh, I, I think that's a, that's a harder thing to reflect on, but um, because I, I do want to mention that there, I mean, I'll just give an example. The New Hampshire Domestic Violence Coalition, they have a, uh, a fact sheet. They actually did a survey on domestic violence against men. It's on their website. Uh, the, the Coalition Against Domestic Violence in Tennessee uh, did a, a, um, uh, an analysis or a report on male victims, so I don't want to I don't want to paint too broad a, a brushstroke here, um, and I and I think it's fair to say that you know you know generally speaking there is growing recognition of the existence and the needs of, of male victims of domestic violence, which again <laughs> puts bring her home in, in in very sharp relief in its categorical denial of the existence of missing and murdered Indian men. Okay, very good. And I think we have a pretty pithy podcast here. Are, are you satisfied that we've made our point and we can wrap it up? Hmm, let me think. Hmm. Hmm. I, I, I think let's do a, con- I'd like to do a conclusion on this. And so, so if you can just throw a conclusion question at me, um, I'll, I'll uh, give you a conclusion. Well, we, we don't edit. Uh, I don't edit any, any of these shows that I do, any of these podcasts. So, um, you, you know, you've asked, you've asked uh, for an opportunity to give a conclusion. So go ahead, wrap it up. What, what, what's the takeaway here? Well, the, the, the undercurrent message of Bring Her Home is the, the, the need for healing. Right, the need for healing of, of families, um, it, you know, again within the context of missing, murdered Indian women. But what about healing between men and women? What about healing within the broader family structure? What about healing that includes the kinship structures that are so important in the American Indian communities? Um, you know, arguably, this the show is not about heal the broader sense of healing. Is more about creating gender stereotypes. It's about 
uh, pitting men against women, um, that's the antithesis of healing. So um, I think we need to uh, look at the, the healing message with a little bit of perspective. Yeah. Wouldn't it be wonderful if you were to make contact with PBS, point out the problems with this documentary, and have them agree to fund, support, and air a piece of work by you and your your colleagues? That's that's pretty hopeful, um, but I'll hope for it. Agreed. Very good. Anything else you want to talk about, Ed? I, I think that. That, uh, that says it all, Jack. Very good. Okay. Ed Bartley, thank you so much for your time. My pleasure. And thanks, and thanks to our listeners for listening. Take care. Thanks for listening to Men Are Talking. Did we deliver? Did you hear something that made you think, wow, I never thought of it like that? If we did, tell your friends. 